Hey folk, welcome back to The Rock Shop. In today's video I'm going to show you how I go about changing the strings on an acoustic guitar. Uh, this one has uh, the bridge pins at the bottom, there are some that you can feed the strings through. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of little tips uh, so that you don't get the bridge pins flying as soon as you start tuning the thing up. Um, and I'm also going to show you how you get the appropriate amount of wraps around the peg post. Uh, and yeah. Some people have asked for it, so I figured I have an acoustic guitar in the shop right now for some work. Here's how you go about changing the strings. Now, I'll show you the tools that you need, and there's not a lot, but I'll show you them just now. Tool-wise, it's really easy. Um, you set aside side cutters for cutting the strings off at the end. You could also use these to pull the bridge pins if you're feeling brave. A peg winder that has a little notch in it. Uh, this little notch is for clipping underneath the bridge pin and helping pull it out or you can get one of these little tools here um, this is purely for just hooking underneath the bridge pin and yanking it out I'll leave a link in the description uh, to all the links for these guys that's a couple of pounds you can get different kinds of these there's a few I've got a that's a Dunlop one that's another Dunlop one that I've modified to fit bass machine heads and then there's this one which I can't remember where I got however um, there are multiple versions of these any set of side cutters will work um, and one of these little bridge pin pulling tools again link in the description below one of the first things you're going to want to do is loosen up the the strings on the peg head. Now some people say not to take all the strings off at once it's fine. If you're taking all the strings off and then putting them all back on in a relatively short space of time like 15 or 20 minutes it's fine. If you're going to leave it sit for a few days without strings on it then you can get into you know, having to tweak the truss rod afterwards but if you're taking the strings off to clean the guitar to put strings back on again that's not a thing you need to worry about. So all you're going to do is just loosen up the machine heads. Again, you can use your uh, your peg winder for this. I'm just going to do it by hand. And then that's most of the tension off of the strings. So we're going to pull out the bridge pins. With all the tension off the strings, these guys need to come out. And it's as easy as take your bridge pin removal tool or your peg winder with a little notch in it. So you can, there you go. And you just clip it underneath the peg and just pull it straight out. It should come out just like that. So that's the peg removal tool. You can use, again, the notch, clip it underneath. Pull it out, clip it underneath, pull it out, or the side cutters, clip it underneath, pull it out. And that's them all removed. Now these should just pop up from the front. Um, sometimes the ball end gets caught behind uh, the bottom of the bridge. You can reach your hand inside and just give it the ball end a little push and it'll pop right out like that. And then you unhook them from the peg head side and that's you done, strings are off. So with all the strings removed, now is a good time to give the guitar a bit of a clean. Uh, I use a, a dry paintbrush. You can just sweep in, sweep up the fingerboard and get in all the, the nooks and crannies. Then I'm going to take a this is a deep socket, you could use a spanner or you could use one of these guys, which is a guitar multi-tool. Link in the description again. And we're just going to snug up um, these string posts. Okay, you don't want to go super tight with these, you just want to, you just want to snug them up. And then that's that. These do come loose over time, just with you tuning up and down, up and down, up and down, and then rattling around in the back of a car and so on and so on these do get loose the lacquer shrinks a little bit especially if it's a new guitar so just every time you're changing your strings just take a in this case it's a 10mm or one of these 
and just snug them. Just check them, make sure they're you know not going anywhere. Now to the main event, putting the strings back on, which seems to be the part that a lot of folk struggle with. It's easy. You don't need to worry about it. So we have our string here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the string and we're going to just put a little gentle bend just at the top of the the wraps like that. Very just using your index finger, just bend it over a tiny little bit like that. And what that's going to do is when you take your uh, bridge pin, you'll notice there's a slot in the bridge pin. There you go. The slot is going to face towards the headstock. So you put your string in the hole, take the slot towards the, the, the headstock, and then just gently push the bridge pin down and pull the string out at the same time. Now that little bend is going to help the ball end seat up against the bottom of the bridge plate and not get stuck on the pin. I'll show you that again. Take the string, just put a little gentle bend in it just like that. Take your bridge pin with the slot in it, put the string in the hole, push the bridge pin in and gently pull the string out at the same time. And that's not going anywhere. Now that will also help it stop coming flying out at the end as soon as you start putting uh, tension on the strings. So that's how you put the string ends in. I'm going to repeat the same process for the rest of these. Done. Now up to the other end and I'll show you how we wrap the string around the post to get it right every single time. So here we are at the headstock end of things. I'm going to show you how I go about feeding the string through the post and determining just how much string I leave to get the perfect amount of wraps around the post. So take our string and before I kind of continue I'm going to make sure that all my uh, the holes on my peg posts are kind of in line with the with the neck which it would seem that they are. So we're going to just feed the string through the machine head like that and then we're going to pull it not super tight but just taut pinch it just at the the nut here and we want to pull it back one fret so pull the string through the post pinch it at the nut slot and pull it back one fret now that is the perfect amount of wrap to give you about two to two and a half wraps around the post and then we're going to take our peg winder and we're going to wrap the string around and we're going to make sure that the short end is on top. Oop. Right, we want to make sure all the wraps go together as well. Sometimes they can get caught on the post. So that's that. What I'll do is I'll zoom in on this guy so you can see what I'm talking about um, about the wraps getting caught on the post. So this is the A string now. We're going to I'm going to try and not get my hand in the way. Pull the string through the post. I'm going to pinch it at the nut slot and we're going to pull it back one fret like that. Now, when it comes to wrapping this. We're going to go down and the wraps are going to go down the post, which you will see. So that the, the end of the string that's loose is on top. Oh, of course it didn't do it this time, but sometimes you can see there's a little bit of a ridge in the post here. The string can just get caught on that. So all you do is just get your fingernail underneath and just push it up and it'll do that. And get it roughly to tension. And it's as easy as that. I'll show you one more time. 
So this is the D string. We put it through the machine head, pinched it at the nut slot, pulled it back one fret, and then what I'll do is I'll use my index finger and I'll push down on the string here and use my pinky and pull the back of the string up. Kind of, you can sort of see like that. Right, if I put get my hand out of the way, there you go. So index fingers push, putting tension on the string here, and my pinky is putting tension on the string up here. Just that holds it in place and stops things slipping around. Then we just wrap the string. There we go. Just like that. Just repeat the process for these three strings. Editing Ross here. I realised I somewhat glossed over which direction you turn the machine heads when you're putting the strings on. So, regardless of whether you're using a peg winder or you're doing it by hand, on a three pair side headstock like this guy, um, you're going to turn the machine heads that are closest to you on the bass strings, you're going to turn them towards the left. So when you put this guy on, spin it to the left. And these guys here, you're going to spin to the right. So they're both going counterclockwise, but these ones are the mirror image. So these ones go that way towards the left. And these ones go that way towards the right. Now with all the strings on, all that's left to do is snip off the excess string and please snip it off, don't leave it on there. Don't coil it up, just take a set of cutters and snip it off. In fact, uh, I'll give you a, I'll show you a little tip. If you don't have any cutters uh, to cut the string off, what you can do is just get a hold of the string and then just wiggle it around in a circle and off it comes. And do it here as well. Take the string, wiggle it around in a circle. Works on all of them. Take the string, wiggle it around in a circle. Now I've done it to these four here, and then for the other two, I'm just going to use a set of cutters. You just go right in up to the machine head. Be careful you're not cutting any other strings, of course. Right up to the machine head and just snip it. Same on this guy. Snip it. And that's it. I'll bring you in for a little closer look about what the headstock should look like when you're done. Um, there's the perfect amount of wraps on all of these. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it should look like when you're done. There's about two to three wraps on each string. The wraps are going down the way on the post, so you can see well, you can see it better on this guy. So this is where the string comes in and it wraps down the way. Same on this one, same on this one, and same on this one. Uh, that is how it should look. Pretty much like that. And then all you need to do after that is just tune it up to pitch. Usually what I'll do is I'll just kind of hover my hand over here while I'm tuning up, just in case any of these come out, you can just push them back in. And that's that. Restrung. Any questions you guys have, just leave them in the comments below and I will answer as much as I can. Cheers guys. Bye.